Hi, Nota Begay the Third here, REDW brand ambassador, and I'm so lucky to be sitting down with Wes Benali, who's a senior manager here at REDW. And Wes, you've been at the firm for 18 years. What's made it such a great relationship for you? Ultimately, it's the people you work with. You know, do they carry the same mindset as you? Do they have the same passion and um, quality of work? that you want for your career, especially as a CPA where you're in a very technical field, you want to make sure you surround yourself by people that are competent, that have good ethics and moral um, ideals on how to treat clients. So and I feel that REDW has always, you know, made that first and foremost in our practice, you know, and, and that's, um, that's the trust that I have with REDW and, and, you know, especially being Native American and understanding you know, what is out there as far as risks go with dealing with the American communities and, you know, and, and um, more importantly, their, their, their financial, you know, um, aspects of the, of the tribes. I think that's what I, um, always makes me feel good at the end of the day. Well, think, you and I are, you were both citizens of the Navajo Nation mm -hmm. and we care deeply about our Navajo community as well as all Native American communities and RDW has certainly demonstrated a commitment to those same causes. What, what makes that special for you and how has that been a benefit to being a part of this firm that cares uniquely about its services to tribes? Our team members that are here that are Native American, other team members that are not Native American to help them learn about what Native American communities are out there in Indian country and kind of understand uh, the relationships that we have with the federal government or state and local governments, you know, with, and it's, it's a unique dynamic that's not um, commonplace with many other CPA firms out there. I'm such a firm believer as far as our young kids are concerned in terms of saying, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Mm -hmm. And so setting that example and providing that pathway. So RDW does an amazing job through our financial literacy program that we've created, but also through the AIGC scholarship awards. How do those opportunities and those scholarships of RDW providing this pathway into the industry make a difference in these young people's lives? First and foremost, go Devils. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting away. next to a Stanford guy, so I kind of take offense to that, but well, I'll let you get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, most of us grew up in, you know, um, you know, low-income families, and, you know, we didn't have, you know, 529 plans set up for college or, or anything of that matter, you know, because they just probably didn't know. You can apply for your, your specific tribe's you know, scholarship program, or you can go on the hunt for federal Pell Grants. Since we're predominantly trying to help the communities that we work with, it just made perfect sense that another avenue for funding, such as the scholarship program, be there to, to help those students who want to pursue you know, their accounting or finance degrees. We don't see a lot of, you know, students specifically in accounting, and that's what we want to promote and push for because we want to make sure that these students that are coming up, you know, can make it through and not have to worry about funding, but focus on making sure that their uh, grades and their uh, involvement with any extracurriculars are, are there. Why do you think there is such a low participation rate as far as Native American students pursuing these specific degrees in accounting and finance related training? Quite honestly, I think it's because they don't see other Native American professionals in that position. A lot of them can see other, you know, professions such as attorneys. You know, there's a lot of Native American attorneys. There's a lot of Native American engineers. But when you get to the finance and accounting field, uh, there's, there's not many. And REDW is, is not a Native American-owned firm per se, but it has a high percentage of Native American team members that support the various initiatives. So how do you think the, the input and the combination of uh, the firm and its high percentage of Native American team members qualifies them to address the issues that tribes are facing in these areas of accounting, finance, and investment. The uh, principals that have been here for, for a long time, who've worked with uh, uh, Indian country all their career, most of their career, 
So whether or not they're Native American, they have an understanding of the unique dynamics and relationships that, that, um, that uh, you know, they, they've seen over the years with, with Native American communities. What I'm most proud of and to be around here is that REW has really made an effort to hire from those communities they serve. So with regard to the future of the firm and how it continues to serve its tribal partners, what's your vision for those next steps moving forward? Well, my vision, you know, is to help tribal businesses make real-time decision making. At REW, what we've initiated is a data analysis team is for, for, first and foremost. And what we're hoping to do with that is to obtain real-time information, filter it, and put it in an information that management can make decisions off of. Second is technology, pushing that forward to help make tribal businesses more efficient and effective. One of the coolest things about the firm has, for me, has been their dedication to commitment. They do a lot of work for nonprofit. They support um, Native American nonprofits across the country, and I know that's an important thing for you. Why are programs like the financial literacy program we created at Santa Fe Indian School so important to the future of our communities? When you're when you're Native American, you're 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 not an individual. You're a part of a community. As you grow up, you're always taught by your elders that you got to somehow give back. You know, and it's, it comes in all different forms on how we do that. It would be remiss of myself to not try to do something like that. And what I think perfectly fits that intent to give back is the financial literacy program. Basic, you know, financial literacy as far as budgeting, you know, putting money away, understanding, you know, investments and so forth. That is something that I did not learn until I, I was practically in college and I kind of had to learn the, long, the hard way. Mm -hmm. It's not a path that I want the younger generation to travel because it was very tough. I consider myself kind of lucky to kind of fall in the right circumstances to make it out. And what I hope and what I want with the financial literacy program is to build that structure and frame of thinking with our younger generation, you know, starting younger, even as, ki as elementary kids and understanding what it means to save, what it means to, you know, uh, put money away for yourself. Even if, you know, adults now are, are wanting to really establish themselves by being um, more um, responsible with their money, you know, that's what we, we always open that up to as well, you know, and, and so that's the passion that I carry with this, with this program. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we have the partnership with your foundation to, to do something like that. And I think it's, um, it's very important. There is um, a need for it. And I think especially in Native American communities. Well, we're certainly proud of the partnership and certainly love uh, what REDW has done with its Native American team members as well as its commitment to Native American nonprofits. So let's just keep doing it moving forward. All right. <laughs>